Hello learners, I am Dr. Subodh Kishirwani, working with Indira Gandhi National Open University in School of Management Studies. The topic which I am going to talk today is scatter plots. I think uh, we have a preceding session which was talking on correlation and when we are going to talk about you know the scatter plots, we are basically plotting the graphs on the basis of you know the correlation on the basis of the variables. So here we are going to talk about the scatter plots. And this scatter plot is going to create and interpret scatter plots in a more systematic manner. And if we go more into the backdrop, we will find out that that it's a very important ingredient when you are going to talk about the correlation. When we are, uh, we have seen in our preceding session that how correlation is very important when we are talking about you know the variables or you know locating the variables in that particular jurisdiction. So anyway, this is part of our course called MCU3 research methodology and statistical analysis and we are here to talk about you know the uh, scatter diagram and if we go more into the depth of this scatter diagram it is also known as scatter plot or scatter graph and rather we can say it's a correlation chart so it's a tool for analyzing relationship between two variables for determining how closely the two variables are related one variable is plotted on the horizontal axis and other is plotted on the vertical axis. So if we have got two variables called x or y then x could be either at x axis or y could be at the uh, different axis. So one is in horizontal axis and another is in the vertical axis. So this is the way by which we are going to plot the graph and the scatter diagram shows the correlation between two variables in a process. These variables could be critical to quality characteristics and factors affecting it. So two factors affecting a critical to quality which we which can be abbreviated as CTQ or two related quality characteristics. So Y dots represent data points are scattered on the diagram. The extent to which the dots cluster together in a line across the diagram shows the strength with which the two factors are related. So anyway, now the question is that a scatter plot shows relationship between two sets of data. So we have got one set which is talking something Mm, uh, positive in that manner, other is talking, you know, uh, um, having an effect of that. So, what this scatter plot is going to do, it is going to bring the positive kind of relationship. So, what can it do for you? Now, when we are talking about scatter diagrams, it can it can do many things for for you know when we are talking about you know the graphical presentation or the diagrammatical presentation in our preceding sessions, um, which was you know quite elaborative in nature, we have seen that how the data is going to be collected and how the data is going to be tabulated and then after how the data is going to be presented visually. So when you are going to visualize the data in a more um, pictorial manner, I think a scatter plot is one of the way by which you can see the comparison. So it is emphasized on the cause and effect relationship and uh, it helps in control variation in any process. It is absolutely essential that you understand which cause are generating with effects. A cause and effect diagram can help you identify probable causes and when you are talking about scattered diagrams, scattered diagrams can help you test them by knowing which elements of your process are related and how they are related. So you will know what to control and what to vary to affect a quality characteristic. So scattered diagrams are especially useful in the measure and analyze phases of Lean Sigma, Six Sigma which we will see how what is the impact of a scatter plot when we are going to plot that diagram. So how do we plot a scattered diagram? That is a very important uh, question which need to be answered in a, in a point wise manner. And uh, first thing is that the first step which we are going to do as far as you know the plotting scattered diagram is that we decide which pair factors you want to examine and both factors must be measurable on some incremental linear scale. So in our previous you know discussion we have seen that how the linear diagrams are going to be made and when we are making a linear diagrams we will see that uh, there could be a positive or a negative or relationship is there. So we collect 30 to 100 pair datas this might mean measuring both factors at the same time or measuring a starting condition or in, in process factor and the end result but the data points also should be related in the same way. So this is the way by which we are going to do. So when while we uh, while we are you know um, making a difference of that, uh, these difference might help you to stratify the data later if the results are not clear. So find the highest and lowest value for both variables, and this will help you determine the length of the scales and interval of your diagram. So 
Now what we are going to do, we will take you know the vertical axis and horizontal axis and one variable can be fit in the vertical axis and other fit in the horizontal axis on the graph and if the relationship of the data is cause to effect, place the cause values on the horizontal x scale and the effect values on the vertical y scale. So this is the pedagogy by which we are going to do that and then we are making uh, start plotting the graphs on the basis of the figure given and make the physical length of the scales about equal and then divide both scales individually into increments so that the high and low values of both variables fit on their respective scales. So this is the way by which we can draw the horizontal or vertical lines. Next step is, is there how we are going to plot the data. So follow along the x scale until you find the x value of your pair and trace up with their y value would intersect with that value on the y scale. So we make a dot on, the, on that intersection and if two or more data points fall on the same intersection either replace the additional dot or dot close to touching the first one. We will see in our you know coming image that how the things are going to be done. So now we can draw a circle around the first dot for each additional data point. So then uh, afterwards you know title of the diagram need to be done and show the time during which the data were collected and the total number of data pairs. So title each axis and indicate the unit of measure used in. So now you see that how we can plot it that uh, we have we have taken you know the this is called uh, vertical axis this is called horizontal axis. So now scatter plot and correlations if you see I think uh, this, this is considered to be a positive correlation and this is starting from you know uh, the, this left point to right point and when we are talking about you know this uh, negative correlation starting from right to left in a, in a upward direction or so this is the way by which the things are going to be done and when you are talking about no correlation it means that no points are intersecting with one another or you know very very uh, so there is no kind of correlation between them. So this is the way and if you see this particular image you will find out that strong positive correlation is there and then if you talk about weak positive correlation this is the way by which the things are going to be done. And when you are talking about no correlation, I think there is no intermingleness, there is no relation between the two. So strong negative correlation and weak negative correlation is there. So now what is the scatter diagram used for? This is a very important question which need to be answered. It is used for validation of two different variables. It is also used for checking the trend with respect to time. The scatter diagram is used to confirm a hypothesis testing between two variables. So, I, I think uh, we have a very elaborative session which was talking about hypothesis or you know the null hypothesis or the accepted hypothesis or alternated hypothesis when the hypothesis become true. So this is purely an assumption. Now when we are using this hypothesis testing I think as far as two variables are concerned this scatter diagram is going to play a very vital role because it used for checking the trend with respect to time and on the other hand it is used for validation of two different variables. So now what we have to do that when we are going to plot the scatter diagram we will uh, follow the four steps like data collection, choose independent and dependent variables, construct the graph and add the titles and trend line and then interpret the graph. So if we can plot the graph I think scatter diagram, this scatter diagram is itself self explanatory in nature and it can give you the clear view about what could be the trend either you have got a negative trend or you there is a no relationship or you got the positive trend. So anyway uh, this is the manner by which we are going to do it. Uh, Let us take a height in, in inches and weight in, uh, in other way and heights are 71, 68, 70, 73, 74 whereas weight are 170, 160, 175, 180, 190. So now we uh, the given data to make a scatter plot and the weight and height of each member of a basketball team. So this is the example which we have taken. So the points on the scatter plots are 71, 170, 68, 160, 70, 175, 73, 180 and 74, 190. Now the moment we plot it on the graph, I think uh, one this is called you know the horizontal axis and this is called vertical axis. So height we have taken in a horizontal manner and weight we have taken in a vertical manner. Now what we have done this 71, 70, so 71, 70, uh, 170 comes here. So this is the first plotting which we have done, the first dot which we have created. 
then you have 68 160 now 68 160 the second dot is here then 70 175 70 175 so this is between you know the two intervals so we have put that dot here red dot here then 73 180 then you know what you observe that one dot a red dot comes here and then 74 190 so what does it mean it means that now we have plot the uh, scatter uh, dots so now with the help of this scatter diagram we have seen that this is the another example which talks about uh, the the points so now what you are, now the correlation describes the type of relationship between two data sets so if you see if you see if there is a strong uh, relationship between the two the the figure is like this where you will find out that uh, the movement of one is going to affect the movement of another the weight of if the more the weight is more uh, more the height is more the weight is or uh, more the weight is more you know the usage of uh, the food as far as the consumption is concerned and uh, if you talk about the week i think this is the way by which the week uh, uh, correlation is going to be applied and this is called no relationship between the two so this is called weak and weak, this is called strong so what does it mean so the line of best fit is a line that comes closest to all the points on a scatter plot and uh, this is the line of best fit so we have seen that line of best fit because there is a relationship between the two and co this correlation is going to be uh, explained with the help of the line of best fit so one way to estimate the line of best fit is to lay a ruler's edge over the graph and adjust it until it looks closest to all the points so so what we have seen that that we have first plot the first you know make the axis horizontal or vertical axis then on the basis of that we have plot the red dots and then we have taken a line which is closest to both the thing so this by this way we can and this line of best fit is, is this line is nothing but line of best fit is called so anyway positive correlation both data sets increase together and when you talk about no correlation i think this is there and when you talk about negative correlation as one data set increases the other data set decrease it so this is uh, the way by which the things are there there are a lot of more examples which are there we have already have a very theoretical session which was talking on correlation the preceding session in this session was we uh, merely talking about how there's a how we can plot the you know the numbers in the, in a scatter format in a scatter diagram so that we can very easily without you know going into the depth of the data we can very easily visualize the uh, the interpretation with the help of looking the figure only so we have got some more good examples so do the data sets have a positive or negative or no correlation we take example if there is size of a car or tanker and the number of miles per gallon of gasoline it can travel so uh, if you talk about the negative correlation the larger the car or tanker the fewer miles per gallon of gasoline it can travel and do the data sets have a positive or negative or no correlation yes your grade point average and the number of a's you receive so positive correlation if you're talking about the the more a you receive the higher your grade point is so now the question do the data sets have a positive negative or no correlation the number of telephones using the same phone number and number of calls you receive so uh, so what does it mean you know uh, no matter how many telephones you have using the same telephone number the number of telephone calls received will be the same so this is another way of uh, scatter plot to make predictions we have uh, at one horizontal axis we have hours and then we have got tips so uh, the currency is denoted and then hours are 4 8 3 2 1 and tips are 12 27 7 26 so so more are you work more your uh, tip is so this is uh, this is the thing so the first we have if we see the 4 and 12 is the intervals where we have plotted so 4 and 12 this is the first dot and on the on the basis of this we have plotted other so accordingly uh, to the graph a worker will earn approximately you know uh, 24 in tips in 10 hours so if he works for 10 hours he get 24 in uh, in tips so this is the way by which the things are going to be done and you see that how the scatter diagram is going to be quite helpful and give the real predictions of the thing so and now if we see talk about you know the boards of worker will assemble in 10 hours so according to the graph a worker will assemble approximately 10 circuit boards in 10 hours so this is the manner we have taken hours worked is 
is put at you know the vertical axis and circuit board at the horizontal axis so now there are benefits of scatter diagram and uh, on the other hand if we talk about the benefit it is beneficial to confirm a hypothesis assumption because when we find out when we do the literature review from there we explore the gap and the, on the basis of these gaps we frame the objectives and then these hypothesis objectives are helpful uh, facilitate us in making the hypothesis or the assumptions and and when we talk about the hypothesis we take the assumptions on on uh, on a alternate basis or null basis so so it is beneficial to confirm a hypothesis assumption between two variables that are related or not related and provide both visual and statistical means to test the strength of a potential relationship so this is a very important ingredient as far as the benefit of scatter diagram is concerned it is very good validation tool and used for providing the relation between cause and effect and on the other hand plotting the diagram is relatively simple it's very simple you know you can take a horizontal axis you can take a word vertical axis one variable could be at horizontal another so whatever the ratio is coming you just put it and then you start putting the dots and then make a line which could you know very near to both the thing which is called line of best fit and uh, limitations of scatter plot is that there are certain constraints there are certain stumbling blocks which can somewhat affect it and it does not show you the quantitative measure of the relationship between the variable and chart does not show you the relationship for more than two variables at a time so this is the you know the biggest stumbling block and that is the reason you know when when the issue comes or as far as you know that we have got more than two variables then we are shifting from correlation to regression analysis so we will see in our coming sessions that how the regression analysis differs from correlation what is the impact of use of correlation or uh, you know when we compare with the re uh, research this regression analysis so there are types of correlation in scatter diagram and uh, there are many different types of correlation found between the independent dependent variables which are mentioned below and uh, mainly three relations available between two variables we can see that strong moderate and no relation a strong positive correlation means it is clearly visible upward trend from left to right a strong negative correlation means it is clearly visible downward trend from left to right so in positive relation as the value of x increases the value of y also increase we can say that the slope of the straight line drawn along the data points will go up and the pattern will resemble the straight line and uh, like you know the example which we have taken the summer season the temperature increases ice cream sales will also increase so this is one of the example and there are a lot of examples you know the negative correlation is the value of x increases the value of y will be deteriorated or decreases and the slope of a straight line drawn along the data points will go down so for example in the summer season the temperature increases the sales of winter coats decreases uh, a weak correlation means it is less clear that the relationship is neither positive not negative and no correlation means either positive nor negative relationship and indicates the independent variable does not affects the dependent variable so i think we have a very uh, thought provoking session which talks about you know this scatter diagram and uh, this scatter diagram is quite useful you know because it shows the relationship between two variables in a process and there are certain modus operandi which need to be followed and on the other hand determine how closely the two variables are related so this is the beauty of scatter diagram the correlation provide us the opportunity to find out you know the two variables what we have and when we are making the scatter diagram we by looking at the scatter diagrams we know that what kind of relationship is there whether it could be positive or negative or no relationship so anyway in our coming sessions we are going to talk some more mathematical concepts or more mathematical thing which can talk about you know the the correlation uh, analysis as well as uh, you know the regression and what are the difference between the two so thank you very much we will meet once again with, with some other topics which can quite interrelated and facilitate us in in uh, in building a block as far as you know the statistical analysis is concerned thank you very much thank you